and the next topic is land resources so land is the most important natural resource because it supports natural vegetation wildlife human life economic activities like transport communication systems etc so we also need a careful planning in terms of the usage of land so india has a variety of relief features like mountains plateaus plains and islands and all of this plays an important role in some way or the other for example it is because of the mountains that we have perennial rivers that flow continuously and forms some rivers and because of the flow of these rivers the plain lands of india has rich fertile soil for agriculture and because of islands we have huge coral depositions and that attracts a lot of water species and and fisheries and then the plateau regions are rich in reserves like minerals fossil fuels and forests so you understand how much land is important and what all we get from it now let's read about the utilization of land so land is used for following purposes first one forest so in india according to the law 33% of the land should be given to forest area because that will maintain the ecological balance then we have land not available for cultivation so either they are barren or waste land or the lands that are there in urban areas for building and roads and factories and then we have other uncultivated lands such as lands that are permanent for pastures and grazing land then we have land that has been allotted to certain tree crops and then we have the waste land which is also called the dump land wherein all the city garbage is dumped and then we have fallow lands so fallow lands are those lands which are meant for agricultural purpose but due to some reason agriculture has not been performed for several years and the land is completely empty and then we have the net sown areas it is the total area where the crops are sowed which means that land is functional for agricultural purpose now let's read about the land use pattern in india so the use of land is determined by both physical as well as the human factor now physical factors are topography climate soil type etc and human factor is the population density technological capability and culture traditions now there is a difference in the land in the plain area and land in the mountainous region because in the plain area it is good for agriculture and in the mountainous area it is not that good for agriculture because the land is not suitable similarly climate is very important if the climate is cold then the land in that region is suitable for certain types of crops for example you see tea plantation it is famous in the mountainous region of darjeeling and in the hills of koromandel region in south so both this place has mountainous terrain and the temperature is comparatively cooler than the other parts of the country and then we also have soil that determines the usage of land so if a particular land has nice alluvial soil it is good for agriculture now coming to the human factor population density determines how many people are staying in a particular place usually you will see high density of population near the plain areas that is the region of delhi up bihar kolkata because there you have the tributaries of river ganga and over the years it has formed plain soil which are good for agriculture so you see how there is a relation between the physical factor and the human factor and then we have the technological capability so places like hyderabad and bangalore which are the it hub of the country meaning these places are technologically advanced so it has given massive boost to the service sector and lot of people today are employed in these technological industries so you see how technology plays an important role and then we have the culture and traditions now places such as banaras haridwar these are the famous religious places in india again the land use of these areas are are so much determined by the human factors so i hope you get what i'm trying to say the next topic is land degradation and conservation measures so this is a topic about how lands in india are getting degraded and what are the measures that we are taking to conserve it you see how human activities has a broad degradation of land so some of the uh, degradation is direct and some are indirect so for example cutting the trees in a forest is a direct cause of degradation of land because it can cause landslides and and other natural calamities similarly dumping industrial waste on a flat land or a, or a river causes damage to the soil and hence affecting the quality of agriculture produced on that land so here are some activities which causes such degradation they are overgrazing then we have deforestation then mining querying so all these things significantly contribute towards land degradation 
So here are some of the places where you can see land degradation in excess. They are Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha. These are largely affected due to mining. And then we have states like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra where overgrazing is done excessively. And then other states like Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh. So here over irrigation is responsible for land degradation. And then some of the industries like cement industry, ceramic industry. So all these releases industrial affluence and waste that becomes the major source behind degradation of land as well as water pollution. Now some of the steps or measures to solve the problems of uh, land degradation are afforestation which means planting more trees and then proper management of grazing. Sand dunes causes soil erosion so a good way is to grow thorny bushes that will stop the soil erosion due to sand dunes. So all these things you can just read up quickly proper management of wastelands, controlling of mining activities, proper discharge and disposal of industrial affluence. So these are some of the crucial steps that needs to be taken towards controlling of land degradation. And the last topic of this chapter is soils. So after land, it is the soil that is the most important resource. And it is also a renewable resource, remember that. Renewable means replenishes. So how do we get soil? Soil is brought down by the running flow of river. So every time a river flows, it brings large chunk of plain soil. That's why it is called renewable natural resource. Now it is very important for plant growth as well as it supports many types of living organisms. So if you look at this diagram, it shows us the soil profile. So on the top layer, we have the soil layer, which is called the upper soil layer. And below that we have the subsoil, which is the weathered rocks sand and silt and clay. So that's why in many places if you dig through the top layer so just in a matter of few feet you will witness wet soil or in other words it's called silt or clay and below that we have the substratum which is called weathered parent rock material and then below that we have the unweathered parent bedrock. So when we say unweathered they are large chunk of rocks or boulders. So the meaning of weathering is over the time a piece of rock gets weathered into small pieces of debris which form soil. So unweathered means which is a still large solid chunk of bedrock. The next topic is the classification of soils. Now this topic is well covered in a separate video soils that is of chapter 6 geography NCRT class 11. The link to the video is in the description as well as on the screen or you can also look at the top right corner of this video screen. You will see the notification tab of that video. You can click on that as well. So watch that video. It is going to be plain and simple and at the end of it hopefully you will be well versed with the different types of soil. And the last topic of this chapter is soil erosion and soil conservation. Soil erosion is defined as subsequent washing down of topsoil. These are caused again by two ways and they are one is human activities like deforestation, overgrazing, construction and mining and the other is through natural forces like wind, glacier, water and where there is soil erosion simultaneously there is also soil formation. So if soil goes from one place, it will go and accumulate in some other place as well. And during rainy season, you can see how the running water cuts through the clay soils and they form deep channels known as gullies. So if you look at this picture, gullies are something like this. Now there's something called sheet erosion. It means a complete sheet of top soil is washed away. And how does that happen if there is a water flow on a large area? So in irrigation sometimes soil erosion is also caused due to wrong way of uh, plowing. You, so you have to plow in a straight manner. So if you do it in an uneven manner, so they will form deep channels and gullies will be formed. And that will actually take away the water. And with water, soil will be eroded. Now there are ways to avoid soil erosion. So one such way is terrace cultivation. So it is mainly practiced in areas of western and central Himalayas. So what they do is in between the crops, they'll grow a strip of grass. And what that grass does is it holds the soil together and doesn't let the soil flow from each column to another. And this method is called strip cropping. So these are some of the methods to stop soil erosion. Now everything in this world has pros and cons. Now if we have to benefit something out of it, we also have to be aware of their cons, consequences as well as their solutions. And with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. I hope you have found this informative. If you enjoy these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.